Ladies and gentlemen, there is a place called Lake Oswego. Oswego. You say it so funny. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Lake Oswego. And it's in it's in where is it, folks? Iowa. No, it's in uh, it's in um, uh, Oregon, and it's right near Portland, right? It's like a suburb of Portland. Is that it's what it is? First, it's the first suburb to the south of Portland. I see. And uh, she'd been living there for how many years are now there? It's been a while. Nine. Nine, yeah, she went from Portland, Maine, to Portland, Oregon. She which confused a few friends. And she was born in Portland, Oregon. So you know, uh, Portland has played a great part in your life, I imagine. You know. Well, I left here when I was fifteen. So, uh, I mean, I visited my father and my brother and my aunt after you know I had moved away, but I didn't spend that much time here. So. Um, you know, I consider New York City my home. I mean, the moment we got there, you felt like I knew you, this is where I belong. I, and I still do. I'm just in the wrong place. I originally, when I first came here, felt that way as well. Because as I grew up as a kid in California with Jewish parents in Marin County, we were one of few Jewish families in Marin County. In fact, they had the Marin County Jewish Community Center, and I think there were only 300 families that were members of it. Well, I was okay. going to say you always were alone there. <laughs> well, you know, uh, when I was living in North Beach, uh, the, I thought that uh, the first name in my religion was Dirty because they all called me a dirty Jew. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I, I just always felt out of place, you know. And then when we moved to New York, I went, this is like I've always felt like I've lived here, you know, because mm -hmm. my mother was from New York, you know. Was the rhythms of the city and the, um, I just I just got it. You know, we lived in a bunch of cities before we got to New mm -hmm. York, um, and you know I was pretty well convinced that Houston was not going to be my permanent home, <laughs> yeah. nor Chicago, nor Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, but New York was oh, it's like I've been looking for this place all my life. Yeah, but you know something I got to tell you, uh, I did miss Houston when we left it. I miss people. I didn't miss Houston. You didn't miss Houston. Okay. Did here? Here was the thing that I noticed about Houston. Um, when we left it and we came to New York, and then we were here for a while, and we would call friends in Houston, we would suddenly notice they had a Texas accent, but we never heard that while we were there. And you came out of it with a Texas accent that lingered My for years. My great aunt Edith, who lived here in Portland, and we always talked once a week for an hour or so on the telephone. Um, after we had been in Texas for a while, and not this was before we left, she said, Ronnie, I'm going to send you a check, and I want you to go get some elocution lessons because you sound too much like a Texan. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember how shocked I was. We hadn't been there very long, and some people we'd met came to dinner one night, and as they were leaving at the door, I, I heard myself say, and I couldn't make myself stop, Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, I don't mean this as any... Uh, oh, let me turn my little light on here. I, I don't mean this as any degradation of the Texans and their ability to speak the English language. Uh, but it is lazier English. You know, well, you it's just... You drop a lot of the endings you, Yeah, the you drop a lot of endings and you talk like this, you know. It's kind of lazy. Uh, I'm not saying that it's wrong. Some people have said that actually some of the Southern dialects are the purest American dialects. You know yeah. what, though? When when we go through like this particular year coming up, when there are going to be a lot of people around, or just anybody in Congress that comes from the Southern states, mm -hmm. uh, and other reasons to hear people who come from there, I'm surprised. It seems to me that over our lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, we've kind of gotten over Local accent, regional accents, they're not so many. They're anymore. not as prominent, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you go to Texas, you don't hear the Texas accent as much. It's not as pronounced as when we live there. I think it's media. that We all hear kind of this bland, even English language. So, But what did we default to? Did we default to California? Did we default to New York? I mean... Not uh, New York. <laughs> Well, I always liked the New York accent, you know. There were many. If I met up with a woman who had like a, a real New York accent, man, it made me hot. I don't know why. Jeez. 
Anyway. In fact, uh, a girlfriend I had after we broke up, uh, Naomi, God, she had like a real New York accent. I mean, she was, and she was from Long Island. That's how you pronounce it, folks, Long Island. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you're right. I mean, we have, because of television, because of media, uh Still, you go into some of those southern states, and they're speaking a language you don't speak. They, no, I haven't they, been to the south in decades. I mean, so they, I when you see, like on television, they, there's a demonstration, and it's in the south, and they talk to people. You can, you know, it's really heavy, okay? But I uh, not all the time. It's not. It's not universal anymore. I don't think. I always thought, being from California, I didn't have an accent, and then I was told by people in other parts of the country they could hear an accent. You know. Yeah, I can't describe it. There's one here, too, that I noticed when I first came back here. Yeah. Um, that I'd always insisted that Oregon didn't, or at least I don't know about the rest of you Oregon. You felt that Oregon didn't have one, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it does, and it is a certain way you say certain vowels. Yeah. Um, which I can't duplicate anymore. Right. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so anyway. But so we how all understand each other more or less. Yes. <laughs> So uh, to get you feeling like Texas, how y'all feeling? <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I'm all right. Yeah. You know, I want to complain about something. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> oh really? <laughs> you you know that this is the Medicare annual enrollment period where you can do all kinds of things of changing your medical coverage with Medicare. Yeah, that's for our older listeners who are listening, which is most of you. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. and um, and in my case, every year I check to see how much my Part D prescription drug coverage has changed and do I need a new one or can I stick with this one? Mm -hmm. And Medicare made a very big deal that they had updated and redone their website and it was easier to use and there was more information this year mm -hmm. so the day came. it's really tedious work to go in and do this and so finally i worked my way up to it a week or 10 days ago and i went and i all my drugs are there and their dosages and all of that mm -hmm. and um i pulled up the first there's several in fact in my case there are 28 um plans I can choose from. So I pulled up the first one, which is the one I have now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's my list of drugs, and it lists the name of the drug and what the dosage is, and then it has a column that says something like number, I think, and my initial guess was the number of pills or whatever that you're taking, or that, and then how much it will cost in retail and after your deductible and you know all the ways they break it up just to confuse yeah, us all right and um so i looked at it and it said that there i had two inhalers i mean the other two or three or four drugs i take aren't very big deal and they were fine and the, the two inhalers that i used one of them said that it was going to cost me twenty five thousand. A month, uh -huh. and the other was fifteen thousand a month. Well, that's out of the question. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm not paying that much now, and I'm not going to pay that next year. I'll just have to live without them if they can't find a substitute. Right. Um. So, uh, I then, as I said, there are twenty-eight plans I can choose from. So I started working my way down. Well, some have ridiculous. Um, pre monthly premiums, like, you know, several hundred dollars a month. Well, you know, I need that to go toward the 25000 you know. And, uh, and others have other reasons not to choose them. But I went, 28 of them, Alex, I went through every bloody one of them. And they all charge something around 25000 or 15000 per month. Did you hear that part? Per month? Per month. Um, this is for the insurance I'm, policy? I'm sorry, what? You say this is for the insurance policy? For my drugs, yes. Part D of Medicare. Oh, my God. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to have to call around. Well, the thing is, if you call Medicare... Those people can answer very simple questions, but they can't go beyond that. Well, they have to look at the same the same book you're probably looking at online. 
Well, I don't really you care. But the point is you don't talk to them for any length of time. Yeah. And, um, and then I called the insurance company that covers me now. Yeah. And um, we won't mention their name because when somebody finally answered the phone mm -hmm. and I explained I needed to discuss the price of these drugs, right. Right. she said to me, well, we're going to have to go online. Are you at your computer? I said, I'm on the page with my drugs. She said, well, now let's start at the beginning. Go to your computer and up at the top, type in www. I said, stop this. <laughs> what information do you need to get on the page with me? And she said, well, let's start and make sure you're in the right place. So start with www. <laughs> No, we're not going to have this conversation. <laughs> Thank you very much, but I think I'll go now. And I tried a couple of the times because you know every time you call back, you get a different person. So maybe once in a while you. Get oh, I've done up. that. I've done that for certain things, not something like this, but certain things. For some company I'm dealing with or whatever, and I've called back twice, three times, and gotten three different answers. Well. Oh, well, there's that, but I'm not, that's not what I'm discussing right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so I thought about it and I made lists of people I could call. And one of the places I call was at, uh, was OHSU, which is the medical center and medical school and the place where I get all my treatment. Right. My cancer and my COPD. And there's a department called patient relations. I think that means complaints, but yeah. I just wanted to ask a question. Yeah. And the woman said she was really sorry they didn't help with Medicare or any other insurance. She's, and uh, <clears throat> so I hung up. And I'm still trying to figure out places to call. And, you know, there's an organization called in different name in different states, but it's yeah. sort of like Sheba. Yeah. And they are trained volunteers. I've met a few of them, two of them in my life. And they are just brilliantly informed on all things Medicare. Mm -hmm. I'll track down one of those people. But before I could get around to it, the woman I had talked to at the patient's place, you know, at the whatever I called it, um, at the medical center, she called my phone rang. She called me back. She said, you know, one of my coworkers overheard my end of our conversation. Mm -hmm. And she said, there's a secret number. I'm not going to mention to you on this where. And an actual person answers. You don't have to go to the phone tree. And they can probably help you. Here's the number. Yeah. Well, apparently it's a secret number. And I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave it a whirl. And I got a person answered the phone. A real person. Yeah. And and I explained my problem. that I was only paying like $100 a month now. And they're telling me online that I have to pay 25000 a month next year and uh, she said no 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 she said are you on that page and I said yes she didn't make me go through the whole thing with WWW w -W -W. <laughs> yeah and um, she said do you see the row where it says number tell me what it says I said it says 60 and um, she says the column before it uh, tells you either how many pills or how many inhales you have mm -hmm. depending on whether you're using pills or inhalers and in that case, on the $25,000 one, it said 60 because I use it twice a day. Mm -hmm. She said, now there's a place where you can edit the column that just says number or whatever the word is. I've forgotten, maybe. Um, and she said, just go in and change that 60 to 1 and then reload the page. And what the Medicare website had done is they thought what that ended up doing was ordering me 60 inhalers per month. Oh. So one inhaler with 60 doses. <laughs> so people all over the country are running into this unless they fixed it by now. That was about a week ago. But, and there's still some problem. I mean, it's still way high that I can't afford. You know, so I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll deal with that and I'll talk to people. But whoa, what a mistake. They think I'm going to get 60 inhalers. This made sense to somebody. <laughs> Yeah, they, you want they, you thought they wanted to know how many inhales you did a month. You know? No, I didn't want to know anything. They were telling me. Yeah, yeah. But what I, I didn't. That, um, that's just, you know. I mean, but and and you were not, you were not un 
internet savvy or f- filling out forms on the internet savvy. I mean, I'm savvy. not afraid of it because I started using them. Right, right. So, so I mean, much you, you know that. than a lot but, of people my age. But, 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 but what about somebody your age who's completely mystified by all of this? They can't do anything. You know, to begin with, there's the assumption that they can even know how to go online. I mean, well, I, that's how they were treating me. Like, I well, I think that's why they were treating you that way. Is they probably find that most people. Well, they don't have to have that tone in their voice. Like, I'm an idiot. Uh, well, uh, they don't know you from an idiot. But why would <laughs> okay. you treat anybody that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, you know, I mean, um, I am, uh, you know, I uh, not the same thing, but I, I have all this online stuff where. I have to deal with like uh, uh, tech companies, servers, people who we run servers. And it's amazing the range of people I deal with in knowledge. I'll, if I get somebody, I, I usually, I hate to be kind of racist about this, but if I get somebody who speaks good English, who I apparently is in the United States, I get a good answer. Not you know, every time. I have gotten some very good answers. But if, I, but if I wind up... Not everyone who works in the United States but, is good at this. But if I talk to somebody in India, uh, you know, it, it becomes a real problem. I found that I say now, uh, would you just uh, turn me over to somebody in the United States? And in most cases, they will gladly do that. I've had terrific help from somebody in, in, in the Philippines, too. I had a wonderful helper in the Philippines once. Um <laughs> I don't think it, for me, it has nothing to do no, with I'll, geography. Uh, you want me to give you the best one? I get, okay. make a call. I make a call. It's to Amazon. But it's Amazon is now farming this stuff out to, I don't know, Sri Lanka or something, right? They all and, do. And, and I'm talking to the guy, and in the background, people are shouting and screaming and having a party. And I said, can you, can you, like, turn that down? Can you ask them to be quiet so I can talk to you? I couldn't even hear him. And he said, oh, no, I can't do that. I went, you know, I finally said, would you turn me over well, to somebody? I mean, that, see, you're blaming that on, on on a country instead of a person or an office. Well, this is a whole lot. Well, anyway, so I said, turn me over to somebody in the United States. So next thing I know, I wait a little while, me, that, that standby music they have. And um, uh, I get somebody in the United States, and I, I ask them a question, and she gives me the answer to it. And I said, by the way. I have a complaint about your customer service. Oh, please. Wait please don't tell me you did wait, this. Wait a minute. I said, every time... I, and she this can't happened do twice. anything. This Why ha- do you do that? Well, listen to me. It happened twice. I said that I have called Amazon and gotten this office in which everybody in the background is having a party. And she said, you know, that's strange because I get them turning stuff over to me. And in the background, I always hear people having a party. Yeah, you know. And she said, I, and she says, that's very unprofessional. I will report it. I think something should be done about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, wasn't there, being there's funny so many it. things that um, I, I just, I guess I just don't have time for that much anymore. Um, it, it's just get, you know, do whatever is necessary to get done as quickly as possible. These kind of boring tasks. Yeah. They tend to take up so much space and time. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, a lot of things is hard to, I got lucky with the woman that they gave me the phone number to call that mm-hmm. she just automatically knew what my problem was. I mean, well, maybe did you know, lots well, of people are having that problem. The, the person you called, who were they? Were they somebody who worked with the government? I mean, was it? I'm sorry, what? With the person you called. The, the, I thought I told you, the, the Sheba person. Sheba? I'm sorry. Yes, Sheba. What? I told you, I explained that to you five uh, minutes ago. Oh, I didn't get that, to be honest with you. It was... it's, there's a, it's, there are 50 of them, one in each state. They're called different things. California has one called, I don't know, something with the word California in it. In Oregon, it's Sheba. Other places have different names. Sheba is an acronym. I don't know or care what it stands for. And these people are highly trained volunteers to help people with Medicare. Wow. And I used to know two of them that we were on a committee or a board together seven or eight years ago, two of them that were Sheba helpers with Medicare. Mm. And they were just amazing. They knew everything. And I'm pretty sure... But they don't give this number out freely. 
I don't know. I did not ask. Well, she said this is a private number. Don't. No, yeah. she didn't say I did. It's not what I said. You said she said you couldn't give it. She couldn't give it out or something, and then she told you what it was. Something like that. I'm sorry. What? When I'm you talk to no 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 when you talk to this one woman who gave you that number. Yes. She was kind of acting like she wasn't supposed to give it out. No. That's how I got it. Well, no. No. Okay. I'm I'm getting old. Um, Be nice to older people, okay? Um, so anyway, I just, I'm. It just they. It's not just Medicare. It's also the insurance companies that make it so hard. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they tout that that the company that that has my coverage this year has got a big thing on their website about how wonderful their customer care is, and they've won all kinds of accolades for their customer service. They were worse than Medicare when I was still calling around. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're the ones that said to me, well, now go up at the top of your browser. You got your browser open and then type in, you know, geez, you know, um, I would have indicated if I didn't know how to do this. You know? <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm just I'm I, I'm kind of very lucky. I think I told you about my insurance because I'm uh, sag after it told me as a senior, I could get their senior plan for that 20 percent donut. Uh, and um, it has been terrific. I mean, it, it, you know, for, what is it, $2,000 a year, which my wife's company pays for, we get $2,500 in dental. Uh, we get prescription. You which, can't walk in a dentist's office for that amount of money. Well, no, but I've, believe me, I've had all my teeth taken care of. That 2500 really helped. Really helped. Usually, I'm sure they're, it did, usually yes. they're fifteen hundred. This one's twenty five. Hey, can know. we not do this anymore? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me finish. Uh, when it came to drugs, they use a thing called Express Scripts, and you have to buy three months at a time. So I buy three months at a time, and I thought, oh God, you know, I was paying like two hundred dollars a month for my medicine at the time. It's going to wind up being six hundred dollars. You know that I'm going to have to pay all at once. And I went in. It's cheaper. I was paying two hundred dollars a month right now because they lowered one of my drugs by seventy five dollars. I'm paying a hundred and sixteen dollars a month instead of two hundred. Uh, excuse me, for three months than I am for two hundred dollars a month. I mean, it, it's incredible. But I'm very lucky that 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 came along, you know, and I'm able to use it, and that. I stayed in the union that long, you know, even though I never had any use for it. So, but uh, how you feeling? I feel okay. You look good. You look good. You know. Um, I feel my bigger problem in day to day. Mm -hmm. This is funny to say after all this time is COPD, the breathing problems, as yeah. opposed to cancer. And that has nothing to do with the rest of the conditions at all. What conditions? Well, I mean, the cancer thing. It has nothing to do with the cancer, the it's COPD. It's two different diseases. In other words, you would have this. If you didn't have the cancer, you would have the COPD. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and it's much harder to deal with the cancer. As far as I know, I don't have cancer in terms of having any um, symptoms of anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, it's come that time again that next week I have another CT scan to see what the cancer's been doing inside there, you know, how many other organs it's decided to move into. <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing, but I'm terrified. I'm terrified every time. Yeah, and they do this, what, every six months, something like that? Every three months. Every three months. Yeah, mm -hmm. boy. Well, you know, uh, my thoughts will be with you, yeah, as they yes. say. You know, they always not, are. It's not... Um, and when, when the, the woman called to make the appointment, I said, my God, could we just skip it? And uh, she said, you know, you don't, it's up to you. And uh, so it's been three months, so I'll go. Yeah. I mean, do you sometimes just say, hey, enough of this potchking around, you know, what's it going to say? It's just going to say it's worse or it's, it hasn't spread as much. I mean, either way, at some point there's a termination to this. 
and why go through all the terrorizing of myself while this this process is going oh, on? It's good practice. Huh? <laughs> it's good practice. How can I control my terror? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, what I'm saying is, you know, you you say to yourself, um, "Hey, listen, if I go, it's either spread more or it hasn't, and I'm not going to change that by having the scan." You know, get what I'm saying? And so, therefore, why should I have yep. the scan and terrorize myself? Why don't I just live my life until there's no longer life to live? Well, you know, it's part of it that I'm kind of fascinated. You know, up front, when I realized it didn't take very long, uh, how much time I was going to be spending mm -hmm. with medical people mm -hmm. in a big deal, huge medical facility, um, there's always... There's always lots of wait time in those situations. So I just decided to study their world. I don't know anything about the medical world. I've been so healthy until now. Yeah. And uh, I mean, once in a while I'd show up at a doctor's office, but not at a big major medical complex like this. Um, there are five hospitals there, for heaven's sake. And, um, and a medical school and a dental school and on and on and on. Um, and it's a whole different world from you and me and how mm -hmm. we've lived. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, it's they're all they're taking care of people that are at their worst. You know, mm -hmm. we're all there. We're either in a lot of pain or we're frightened. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a death thing to be frightened of what they're going to do to all the different things doctors and surgeons and stuff can do to you you know it's um <clears throat> there's a lot to especially when you don't understand any of it and you're not part of that world and you don't know how it operates or it's easy to be frightened yeah you know? yeah even if it weren't life or death well it sounds like you're in good hands yeah mm -hmm. and it's I all am, you, i feel like i am in good hands um it's just the damn scans every now and then, you know, yeah, just yeah. hard. Yeah, well, you thought that when you graduated school, you'd never get tests again. And, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and this is kind of like that, you know. Uh, you're waiting for the, for, for the test scores to come in. And, and uh, where you were terrorized by that every half a year or something like that, now you're terrorized by this. It, it's, you know. I, know I don't want to say terrorized. I just, I would rather not know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't, it's been almost two and a half years, Alex, since I was diagnosed. And I knew something was wrong with me for six months before that until they figured out what it was. And and I've lived long beyond my best by date, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the People with pancreatic cancer don't live very few live more than a year after they're diagnosed. So, hey, I won some kind of lottery here that not only have I been here longer than that, but most of the time feeling pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So I won the lottery here. I really uh, don't let me, have we're, any we're, we're running over, but I just want to ask you a quick question. Your, your thoughts about Alex Trebek. I mean, he's made his pancreatic cancer very public. Yes. And and that's a good thing. You know, I, I don't think it's a bad thing, but... Uh, I don't give him much hope. Well, the, he wasn't diagnosed until stage four. Mm -hmm. And while, from what he's told, I'm only operating on what he said in those little interviews that he's done, is that uh, when he was going through chemo, which apparently he had a much rougher time with chemo than I did. He described just like being curled up on the floor at work with pain. Mm -hmm. And I never went through anything that bad at all. Nowhere near what he was describing. Right. Um, and uh, and he just recently recorded a PSA mm -hmm. uh, because the 21st of this month will be World Pancreatic Cancer Day. So he recorded it for that. Um, and I think that it's a good thing for someone um, of his renowned, right. fame, right. You know, right. millions of people know who he is, mm -hmm. to talk about this because pancreatic cancer doesn't get enough attention. The main reason is that compared to lung cancer, prostate cancer, a um, couple of other cancers, 
very or few many fewer people get pancreatic cancer. It's a right. rare cancer. Um, so it doesn't get as much attention or as much research money. So it's a good thing. Well, is it, it's, like, it is considered to be the deadliest cancer, right? One of them. Not, yeah. not, I think there's another one. that. I, I, however, they measure deadliness. Yeah. I don't know. But it's up there. You well, know? you were very lucky. We have to get going here. But, but you were very lucky in that most people who have pancreatic cancer are just told, go home, say goodbye to your friends and neighbors. You're going to be gone in six months. You know? Mm-hmm. And in your case, they said, we can do something about it, or we can try and do something about it. And they had the operation, and it was horrible. They got you open like a carp. And then... Yes, they did. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, it was, it was, it was pretty, pretty severe as things. an operation. They removed stuff. They shear stuff off. I mean, it was, you know. But basically, no pancreatic cancer now. But No, that's not true. The pancreas has been hit again, or is it moved, just moved to other organs? It moved out to other it's, organs. Pan, I, it's my pancreas, my lungs, and my peritoneum, oh, at okay. least. And we'll find out if there are more next week. Wow. Wow. Anyway, you're looking good. Thank you. You know. I feel good, except for a couple little things, but no big deal. No big deal. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my ex-wife. That's you spend the whole time on my cancer and Medicare. Yeah, sure. Why not? Fuck them. You know, I mean, you know, nobody likes to hear what old people have to say, but we're going to say it anyway. I think it's important what you had to say about it. And if more people want to find out what it's like to suddenly get older, uh, timegoesby.net is your blog, and it is terrific. I mean, I read it on a fairly regular basis, and I'm uh, anybody who reads it is, I think, their knowledge is greatly enhanced, and oh, they know perfect. they know the terror they have to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not real good at not telling the truth, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. Good talk to you, Ronnie. You too, Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen.